Hello everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well, hope you're all doing fantastic, and that you're all having a great day. Don't forget to follow and subscribe to my other YouTube channel called Money Rules. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. Here we are yet again. Well, not really yet again. Like, kind of, kind of maybe yet again. The point is, um, we have been, the last two to three weeks, we've been graced uh, with nothing but good and happy and fun uh, cryptocurrency news, for whatever the reason might be. Over the course of the summer, I know we keep looping back over to it, but it was a big thing. A lot of people ended up leaving the market. It was actually quite weird, or not really that, I, I don't know. Once again, just simply because whenever prices go up, everyone seems to be very interested and like amazed at the future of what cryptocurrencies are going to be. The moment prices go down, even by a tiny bit, do you remember who kept on leaving the market? Yeah, that's the major portion of the news. It says Bitcoin is regaining popularity among retail traders after months of absence. This is according to new data. Every time this was, I mean, this was basically the summer, if you don't remember. Every time that prices went down, the only People who were selling were retail investors. It was the same over and over. Everyday normal people who would or could benefit the most from actually buying and holding crypto, they sold off the quickest every single time. And now, as we are in October, it looks like they're slowly re-entering the market once again. Findings originally uploaded on Twitter on the 18th of September by analytics account Bitcoin Data 21 show one crypto app in particular is making a comeback. I'm certain you'll never be able to figure it out. Bitcoin and crypto have faded from mainstream consumer radar in the last six months. Since Bitcoin to US dollar hit its latest all-time high, when we were around, I'm like screaming, when we were around springtime, everything looked absolutely great over the course of the summer. Even, I mean, prices, if you realize, like prices fell down by like 15, 20% and that was it. We didn't fall down by 38%. We didn't fall down by like, I was almost at 120%. It wasn't that bad. People left, like fled the market nearly instantaneously with some kind of expectation that prices were only going to go much lower. I attribute that to many other <clears throat> other crypto YouTubers who continuously uh, gloom and doom people, making them believe that Bitcoin's going down to $5,000 with no actual reasoning as to why. You, there were also a couple of news stories. I don't think we covered them here. On like actual like news news, you know, like uh, mainstream news platforms. And they were discussing like, is Bitcoin done for? Is like, there's no interest in Bitcoin. We had like 15, 20,000 new Bitcoin addresses every single day. But like the mainstream viewpoint, Bitcoin was completely disappeared. It gone like, you know. Everyone just assumed that Bitcoin was never going to come back. It says now, however, things may be finally changing. According to downloads of the official app of the largest crypto exchange in the US of A, Coinbase, a chart created by Bitcoin Data 21, reveals that Coinbase is regularly among the top 500 most downloaded. That really? Top 500 all the time? I know I sound like shocked, but like I'm, I'm, I'm being completely honest. Think of how many apps are out there. I wonder what the actual 
when we get the actual numbers of new wallet addresses, those aren't cryptocurrency exchanges. I don't know if people know that. Like we know that crypto exchanges have like certain accounts and then like within their actual metrics, they have like other like tunnels that aren't exactly connected to the blockchain per se. They keep their coins obviously on the blockchain and in different accounts in a hot and cold wallets. But when you hear that new people are like actually joining Coinbase, these aren't new wallets with like an actual wallet address. Like they're on like a Coinbase server or servers, if you will. If there are, I mean, 20, 30, 40,000 apps, I don't, I can only assume actually those many apps plus. And if Coinbase is constantly within the top 500 on any given day or any given month, I wonder how many people are constantly joining Coinbase per day and how much money is also being pushed into the market through Coinbase. We've never gotten that metric before. We've gotten that, you know, 10, 15, 20,000 new wallet addresses on chain appeared and they bought 5, 10, 15, 20 dollars worth of Bitcoin on Bitcoin's chain, obviously. If there's how many downloads do you need per day to actually be in the top 500 of every app that has been created? How many new people are always entering Coinbase every single day? And so I'm 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 asking because of like is there a well no we we the public wouldn't be able to see. Like how much money is then flowing into Coinbase every single day? How much Bitcoin is actually being purchased on Coinbase every day? If you look at a a crypto exchange's wallet address, like sometimes you know, like we've been talking about like the wallet addresses, like the amount inside of it will go down. So on any given day, let's say randomly, random number. Coinbase has a million Bitcoin. <clears throat> And we see that the amount of it is like going down, going down, going down. Because that's people taking their money off of the crypto exchange. But we're not seeing how much is being bought in a day that doesn't plan on leaving that exchange from that one million that they're holding. So if you get 10,000 new people every day, random number, on Coinbase, and each one is buying, let's say, six, seven dollars worth of Bitcoin. That's an entire Bitcoin that's being taken off of the market. You get what I mean? Like, I, I I wonder what the actual metric is. Sorry if I'm like rambling, but like, I wonder what that number correlates to because it makes me wonder how low that does it have to drop and how low does interest have to be for Bitcoin's price to actually go down or not move on a crypto exchange if you're getting 10,000 people every day who are constantly downloading it, putting in a buy order. And I, and I used $5 as like an example. Most people are probably putting $25, $50, $100, $300 in at any given time. I wonder what the market dynamics are for the price to actually even have to go down or who would even be selling or considering selling for prices to have to drop. Fascinating indeed. The chart shows that downloads, arguably predictably, correlate to price performance. The peak of bull market saw Coinbase enter. Wow. The top 175 apps, while below 500th place, corresponds to bear markets, as one would assume. It says, in other words, more people started downloading the app <clears throat> when Bitcoin was testing all-time highs, November 2020 at $20,000, and March 2024 at $69,000 and $74,000. How fascinating. Interesting, they said. We are also now back down to bear market levels <clears throat> where retail is no longer interested, but with the price around 60K, end quote, and I have a little chart which is lines and stuff. It looks like a, I don't even know what this is. It just looks completely, absolutely insane. That was, okay, hear me out here. I, th we, we don't get ever the full picture of everything that's actually happening within the market. Even remember every single time that we kept on hearing that like, you know, people were selling their ETFs or the ETF had outflows that same exact day or even the next day. It was always like a yesterday kind of thing. We would see that nearly the exact same amount had been bought by whales. 
So for those of you who missed it, if we heard, let's say, $49 million worth of the ETFs, Bitcoin ETFs, had been sold on that day, the next day we would get news that like $70 million had been of Bitcoin had been purchased by whales, like actual normal accounts on chain, and had actually moved that money over to like wallets that had only had inflows. That's also part of the thing that I was talking about as well. Doesn't it seem really, hmm... Even if you talk about that we're down to like air quote bear market levels of people creating, and I mean like actual creating wallet wallets and also Coinbase wallets, during any normal like bull run or even a bear market, bear market will have about 10, 15, 20,000 new wallet addresses a day. Do you remember earlier this year when we when prices were like spiking, 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 like earlier this year, and then we had a day where there were 330,000 new addresses in one day. Those are the normal like amounts that we would normally see over the course of like a bull run, 200,000, 300,000, 180,000 over the course of a day. When you talk about the amount of accumulation that we've been seeing, that's what I meant by like, I don't want to use the term genius because I'm sure these people are evil, but like the idea that they were able to, they were able to accumulate over the course of a two year period. 91% of all Bitcoin just in wallet addresses that were holding over a thousand Bitcoin while retail was completely losing interest. How do you make sure that you can accumulate quietly? I guess over if you, 365 over the course of a 700 day period, how are you accumulating so much that you can acquire 91 plus percent of all the Bitcoin? If 91% of the Bitcoin is held by wallet addresses with over a thousand Bitcoin inside of them, and then anyone beneath that also isn't accounted into the metric, how much Bitcoin is actually being held by people who have over 50 Bitcoin in their wallet? Not a thousand plus, do a hundred plus. Are they holding 94% of all the Bitcoin, 95% of all the Bitcoin? What happens when you actually get to the wallet addresses who are holding over 50 Bitcoin, 20 Bitcoin? That's still a huge amount of money. A lot of people seem to discount like the idea of even holding like 10 to 50. It's a huge amount of Bitcoin. If Bitcoin's at 70,000 and you have 10 Bitcoin, that's $700,000 in Bitcoin. If you have 20 Bitcoin, that's $1.4 million worth of Bitcoin. That sounds like a whale to me. That doesn't sound like a small wallet address. A small wallet address has one one hundredth or one tenth of a Bitcoin. Think about it. How weird is that? That, 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 that? These accumulation levels have accelerated so much and we've seen them in buying so much. And even now, price is moving. We see that the metrics are still at like bear market levels, basically indicating that retail is still not as interested as they could possibly be or should actually be. Remember my theory before where I was like, I'm fairly certain that like retail investors aren't going to get into the market until we're firmly over a 100, 120, $150,000 Bitcoin. They're just not going to want to enter the market because Bitcoin doesn't seem expensive enough for them. But think about that mentality. Bitcoin is at $1,000. No retail is there. Just like nerds, air quotes, people who like really like Bitcoin, enthusiasts. Bitcoin goes to 20,000. People rush into the market as fast as they possibly can to try and get some of this digital gold. Bitcoin falls back down to $3,000. Retail leaves. It's higher than the 1000 where it was before, but there's no interest. Bitcoin goes from $3,000 to $40,000, $60,000. Retail rushes back in. Bitcoin goes to $70,000. Retail leaves. Bitcoin floats around ten, fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000. It's higher than it was in 2017, but retail still leaves the market. Still not learning the lesson that they should just simply remain in the market to be actually to make the gains from the prices when it ends up going back up. The price the price for us floats around sixteen thousand dollars for a while. It was like a good like month or two. Prices rush back. Listen to this. Prices rush back up to seventy thousand dollars. We hit like seventy three thousand or something or other earlier this year. We fall back down in price. By 15, 20%. We didn't, we didn't fall back down to a $3,000 Bitcoin. Most of the summer, we were floating. What was it? Did we even hit $40,000? In my mind, I'm only seeing or remembering a like $50,000, $53,000 Bitcoin. And then retail still leaves. Why do you leave the market? Why would you leave the market when you know? You know in the back of your head that prices are going to go back up. 
Isn't that an odd mentality to think of? We're always higher than the previous lows or even the previous highs and people still flee the market. And it's, it's retail over and over and over. Imagine if all those people had stayed in the market. Imagine if the people who bought at 1,000, who bought at 4,000, who bought at 6,000, who bought at 14,000, who bought at 21,000, who bought at 54,000, stayed in the market. We go to 120,000. Because listen, what's going to end up happening is, is that Bitcoin is going to, listen, my opinion, my opinion, what happens if Bitcoin hits half a million dollars per coin and then, and then subsequently falls back down? We, we have no idea what this cycle is going to be like because the world is, is all over the place right now. Bitcoin falls back down, let's say, to $210,000. Retail would leave the market again. Bitcoin goes up to $825,000. They rush back in. Isn't that so odd to think about? And it's, 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 it's almost like clockwork, like literal clockwork. Every four years, we know that the prices are going to go back up. We know that the halving is going to happen. We know that prices will move up higher to bring retail investors back into the space. The, the, if these people stayed in the market, not only would they continue growing wealth, the market would probably not have any crazy downturns. And that loops us right back around once again to what I have constantly been saying. This is why rich people want normal people out of the market. Because when normal people are in the market, they panic. They're, 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 the words, I mean, I was going to say the word irresponsible, but what's the word? I don't know. Like they, they, they panic so quickly when anything happens. The way to make sure that money maintains its strength is essentially by centralizing it in the hands of a few. That's not, that's not me advocating for it. But that's how markets don't move as crazy. Because so many people, I remember I told you before, so many people want to get into the market. I just had that friend who was talking about getting into the market as well. And I was trying to explain things to her. And I, okay, also have another really close friend. His father also recently got into the market. I want to say like a year ago. It's still relatively recent. And when prices were moving up and down, he was euphoric. He was contacting my friend about how happy he was. I remember prices went down by like 5%. I don't check prices every day like it's not important to me. And you shouldn't either. Like it just drains the brain. Prices went down by 5% and he called my friend panicking. He was like, should I sell? Am I selling today? Do I have to sell? Like that was the mentality that he had. When, when the price is like, you don't do the research to actually even figure out why you're euphoric. Or why you end up being sad when prices go down. Or why you think that you should sell. What makes you think that you should immediately be selling? Who told you that you have to try and time the market? Where's this mentality coming from that if prices go down that you have to get out of the market and wait for somebody to be able to tell you that you should be re-entering the market at a better price? We don't know where prices are going to go. That was the thing he had to tell his father. He was like, if you sell, I don't know if it's going to go any lower. If we knew, if we knew where prices were going to go... I'd be able to make a video and explicitly tell you, hey, tomorrow the price is going up by, by, by 7%. The next day, prices are going down by 8%. You should probably sell at midnight. No one knows. What makes people think that other people know where the market's going to go? It keeps making so much more sense why these people flush everyone out of the market. It's because of irrationality. I was thinking irresponsible. It's kind of the same if you think about like growing wealth and stuff like that. It's this like hyper irrationality, like completely surrounding this fear of like, what like what if I'm doing something wrong? Like that's why like like so many other like you you've heard it before, like like set it and forget it, buy it and walk away. Like all these other cutesy terms that people end up using, because it's the only thing that makes or would make sense to other people. Like you have to just like kind of forget about it because otherwise you're like, it's going to preoccupy so much of your mind. I wonder why it does that for other people. Like even like, 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 like for the cryptocurrency space, maybe like it takes like, I don't want to use the term forging. Forging sounds crazy, but like I'm so unfazed by market movements. Like something really devastating has to happen. Like Bitcoin has to fall to $800. For me to be like, oh, snaps, like something is really wrong. Any movements don't phase me because I know that during the cycle, prices are going to move back up. I'm going to make more money. So I just keep on accumulating. But I think you may be, am I incorrect? Do you have to be in the market for like, like I mean, years or any market? 
It's the same when I was explaining to her how to get into stock. She was asking at what point she should cash out. Remember I told you I have this other, I mean, we're actually not friends anymore. I was telling you this, this, this other girl who I know, she was, she, she was asking me like, her father like set up this automatic thing to put money into the stock market. But she was trying to figure out how to take the money out. She wasn't thinking, not only was she not thinking long term, but she was thinking that basically this money that he was putting into an account every month for her was basically something that she could go have fun with. There was no idea of like not even longevity, but like watching the market to see where it goes. Isn't it so weird? I find it so fascinating. So many people know nothing about finance and they don't want to know anything. Like there's no perception in their mind that they should actually. You know, how many people do you know who don't invest, who don't have any money? And, and, and I and, and I put those into separate categories because the people who I knew growing up who didn't have any money, like we grew up poor, got it. But now that we're adults and I try, I still try like in vain, it, I, I, like, like, like I feel so dumb sometimes. I try and tell people about investing and where they should, like what they can do with money, where they should put their money, how to make it grow. And there's such a, like a heavy disinterest from all these people, but it makes sense. Like, look at these numbers. Of course it makes sense. If you weren't interested before, you might, this is, so here's, 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 here's a word of advice for all of you, a literal word of advice. Do you know how to tell when a, when, when the Bitcoin cryptocurrency Markle cycle, Markle, market cycle has topped when people who you know, who have never asked you about crypto, have never gotten into the market, have never gotten into a market, when they start giving you investment advice and when they start telling you about the market. Remember I told you years ago, this was 2017, like the end of 2017, and I, and I told you this story I think in 2019. Years ago, I knew someone who I was telling crypto about. They weren't interested, and it's annoying, I know, I know, I know. They told me that they got into a taxi and they were driving somewhere and someone told them about crypto. And they were like, oh, that's so weird. Like someone, someone else knows about this market. How weird. They went to a, like a store and as they were like getting ready to pay for their stuff, someone behind them was talking about crypto. When they got to the register... The person was like, hey, do you know this thing called Ripple? Everyone's making money with it. That is like the red flag. There's also that other famous story of that other Wall Street person. I don't know what this guy is. Somebody in New York, he said he was walking around and he heard like people who didn't, how do I say this? Who didn't look like investors, who weren't like of wealth, of means. I don't know how to phrase that any other way because the guy said in like a pretty, pretty, um, gross way but basically he said that like he heard them talking about it and he walked up to someone and went, hey you know you got any tips and he said he heard them talk about the market and they were like yeah you should buy this 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 and this and he said he told his friend he was like sell sell everything and like like a week and a half later like like the market crashed that's how you always know it's literally like like the tail end of of retail for some reason like they they they, they, they come in droves large packs of them enter the space Talk about the space and markets and money as if they've been there the entire time. That's always the red flag. So you'll hear people this cycle talk about crypto in February, March, April. Everyone's making money. The market's going up. Everyone's doing well. Start paying attention around next autumn, the people who are talking about it. And I mean like down to, like down to the bones. Like your grandmother tells you that one of her friends told her to get into crypto. How, how do you do it? One of your friends who you haven't heard from in a long time starts asking you about it and tells you that he heard someone else talk about this coin. Though, like Those are literally the red flags. I have an aunt. If I had known, if I had known years ago, around November, early December 2018, she was asking me how to buy Ripple. That was how everyone referred to it back then. How do you, do you know Ripple? How do you, how do you, how do you get into this thing? And I remember I was one euphoric because I was like, oh my gosh, a family member wants to make money. But then also like you kind of sit there after and you're like, how did, where did you hear this from? 
Like it's like a chain. Like it just keep, can, it keeps falling down amongst all these different people. The, the, the mindset is so... I don't know what it would... I've told you about at least 12 different friends over the years. Not my like my close friends who are like... I nearly forced these guys to invest. I I wish I was half joking. I have friends. I sat down with them and I was like, listen, you need to get it together. You need to learn how... Like, I'm going to teach you the everything you need to lo- to know about investing. These are the friends I always tell you about, like the ones who like have homes, who have like, you know, they have pretty good like accounts, like they, they're doing really well. My other friends who dodged for years and like refused to learn about any kind of markets, I don't know what it would take for them to learn or even like want to get into it. If we're at dinner any kind of time, has this happened to anyone else? If we're at dinner and we're hanging out and they they see that the markets have gone up, They'll inquire about if I'm in that market or if I made any money. If I end up, so I mean, I try and keep business to myself. But if I tell anyone or like it slips at some point that I, you know, I bought a new property, I did a so and so, like all these other kinds of things, you see that like that glimmer in their eyes. They want to learn, but then someone talks about the pasta that they're eating and it fades away completely. What? You know how, like, think about it. Think about five years ago, like five, five, five years ago, 2019. If you had gotten into the market, how much money would you have made? If you had gotten into the market in 2014, a decade ago, how much money would you have right now? How many assets? How many things would you have bought? Think 10 years from now. That's the thing that always gets me. I don't know why people don't look ahead. Why they don't look towards the future. Like, I, like this is a real thing that I'm talking about. I don't understand why people don't care about the future. I get it. You know, we're meant to live day by day, hour by hour, making the most of. But, you know, time, move, time moves forward. Remember that thing I told you, that YouTuber, you know, uh, okay, whatever. That, 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 that YouTuber, this was a couple of months ago. He made a video. It was like... It was titled like my my biggest regret. I forgot what it was called. It was something stupid. But he was talking about that like he made money from somewhere. He didn't say what market or whatever. He didn't say crypto. He said he made money and the first the first the first thing that he did was he went and bought like like a car that was $200,000 because in his mind the perception was that would bring him extra money. People would see he had a nice car. People would want to talk to him. People would see that he had a nice car. He would get a nice girlfriend. People would see that he had, like, it was just this idea that he had. And then at some, and then he, wherever he was making money, the thing went belly up. But he didn't have any more money. And I was, he was talking, you know, I, I don't have any money, like, to rent out a place. And I was like, nothing in your mind told you to prepare for the future? Take 150 k from that and buy a one-bedroom apartment. Even if you're putting the money down, that's still a huge deposit. The other 50K, take 10K, go on a nice little vacation holiday. Take a good two, three weeks more. 10, 10K is a lot. I'm tired. I'm exhausted. I'm tired of hearing people talking about that they took a vacation for a week and it was $5,000. Are we living on the same planet you know what $10,000, you can take, listen, you can take a three-week cruise for about 2200 to maybe $2,500, a three-week cruise on a luxury cruise liner. The other $7,500, you go to Bali, you go to Thailand. I mean, you can go to the south of France. Everything is in Monaco. You can you can you can go to the south of Spain. You can go to Morocco. Ten thousand dollars for a vacation should la- listen, even if you have a significant other, because I know I just heard someone say, Well, I have a partner. Yeah, 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 yeah. You know. Every hotel room doesn't have to be 700 per night. Like, you don't always have to live things up. I'm going to try and re- remember to repeat that. 
during like the bull cycle, bull market, Bitcoin's at $250,000. To remind you, if you skim a bit off the top and you want to take a little, you know, vacation, do it wisely. What's the point of spending 5,000 in a week when you can spend 10,000 over the course of multiple months? What? That's insane. I don't even understand. Remember when I whatever. I I I took a cruise one time. I think it was 14 days, 14 15 days. It was through um it was through like the Mediterranean and all these other places. That was I think it was like 1600. What are you why, what are you talking about? And that and that was all inclusive as well. Sorry for the I definitely went off topic. I don't understand how people do that. It makes no sense. There's a there's a show on Netflix. It wasn't it wasn't the swindler one. Was it? I don't remember. This guy He's 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 getting 200k, 300, 400k from people. And it's all gone in a month and I'm like do you want to like that money can like I mean last you for a li- $400,000 in Bali? Have you ever has have <laughs> if you if you want to do something after this video, uh watch a video about people in Bali. Look at the prices. In Bali, look at the prices of homes in Bali, and, and I don't mean, I don't mean uh, like, f- like pay attention to where you look as well, because some people will try and show you, you know, this this is two hundred k. No, 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 no. Watch, watch these videos of of these people who bought these uh one dollar homes in Italy. They put like twenty thousand into them, and bought these like three bedroom places like 40 minutes away from Rome and all these other beautiful cities. You know how far? That's I I asked that question before. This was a while ago. How much money do you think you need to like not only be happy but like like really live your best life? A lot of people have it from the perception of like where you live. If you get a chance I'm telling you, when the market goes high, 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 high to travel the world, please, please do it. You will see how much more that there is out there, how much more, how much farther your money can go, the stuff you can get. You know what you can do with 400,000 US dollars around the world? It's in oh my gosh, it's crazy to actually think about. I went completely. I forgot we were even talking about Coinbase. I'm not gonna even lie. I completely if you had, if you had said the word Coinbase to me, I would have been like, I don't know what that is. <sighs> oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. Okay, it says since then a Bitcoin price rebound has improved the app's popularity, with Coinbase reaching the 385th place on the 28th of September. They said, most importantly, the app reached number one. Whoa. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. The app reached number one in December 2017. Makes sense. April 2021 and November 2021. Ooh. Ooh. That was always like, ooh. Okay, fascinating. Well, I I guess the, 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 the moral of the story is... Pay attention to the App Store and figure out when 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 Coinbase becomes number one, because that's basically the end of the of of the bull market. If you if you took nothing away from this video, take away that piece of information. Oh boy, yeah, that was I went completely off topic. Okay, yeah, I think you get it. Uh, prices go up, Coinbase becomes more popular. Uh, when the app reaches number one, you know, start a. Uh, Start making some decisions. Yeah. I do hope. That was a crazy video. I do hope that you've all enjoyed. I do hope you all are having a great day. Morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you are, wherever the heck you might be. I do hope it's absolutely fantastic. Thank you all once again for watching, listening, liking, commenting, and supporting. And I will most certainly be talking to you all soon. See you.